there's one number that they can't really change right now, and that is what the placard says at the local gas station. Yeah. And that number is high, and there's nothing the White House can do about it other than bring down the price of gasoline, which and, is tough. And, and, and maybe blame Putin. Americans just don't buy that this is related to the war, to the war in Ukraine, and, and most of it, frankly, is not. The White House is trying to do... To do both. Blame Putin, blame the oil and gas companies, but Americans just don't agree. Ooh, when you lose CNN, the analyst saying there, the White House, Putin price hike, and that's in quotes, as a talking point, doesn't work. President Biden last week announced the largest ever release from the Strategic Petroleum Reserves to try to lower those record high prices at the pump, but he said maybe up to like 35 cents a gallon. Well, they've gone up more than two bucks since he's been in office, $1.92 of that before the war started. But one energy company president says none of this is going to help and may even hurt us down the road. Will these extra barrels have any impact on prices at the pump? Unfortunately, probably not in a good way. If we don't refill the reserves, we're in trouble because there are all kinds of other disruptions in the world. If we don't replenish that emergency reserve in the coming years, we'll be even more vulnerable to price spikes when, as they always do, these geopolitical disruptions occur. Who wants to tell President Biden that truth? Uh, Washington Examiner op-ed with this headline, Putin didn't give us high gas prices. That was Biden. Joe Concha, Fox News contributor and media and politics columnist for The Hill. Uh, Joe, great to have you in focus today. What do you think about the fact that the president is getting this so wrong? Is it him? Is it his people? It's his people primarily giving him the talking points, the messaging, right? They're gaslighting us on gas prices. It's not just CNN that's saying it in their polls. Emerson College poll, twice as many voters blame the Biden administration than Russia or gas and oil companies. Remember, this is the president that said during the campaign, loudly, I might add, no more drilling on federal lands, no more drilling, including offshore, no ability for the oil industry to continue to drill. So this was the intention. Obviously, Keystone, five minutes into the administration, the extension of that pipeline gone, drilling in Alaska and Anwar, that's gone. It's obviously having an effect, and the American people aren't stupid enough to believe yeah. that because Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine 40 days ago, that gas prices that have been going up since November of 2020 suddenly started happening. Well, we tapped it in November. Mm -hmm. We meaning the United States. The president did this already in November. And it had no, no impact. And it had no effect. He said the prices started coming down. Well, then how come you're screaming at, at Putin and, and the oil company execs and, mm -hmm. and blaming everybody coming into the year? And now the war has begun. 40 days in, still the same thing. Why not change to the truth now? Americans know what it is. You would think by now they would do that, Harris, because this is the point the finger at everyone else's administration. Think of all the major issues that we're facing right now. Inflation, they blame COVID. Crime, Jen Psaki said it was Republicans who wanted to fund the police. Uh huh. The border, they blame Donald Trump and a problem they say they inherited instead of created. And in education, they blame parents. Either way, someone else is responsible except for the people in power. Yeah, and it always weakens your argument to, to blame the, the man who had your job before. I mean, literally, people, they roll their eyes so hard they go to sleep on it. Biden's move to tap into the oil reserves, causing a rift now among his own Democratic Party. And the Washington Examiner says the decision is rattling progressive activists who are calling for clean energy instead of what he's doing now, which is going to some of the dirtiest oil refiners on the planet like Venezuela. Other Democrats are praising the administration for the move. Watch this. So that's a good start to sort of open that, uh, open the floodgates up, so to speak, in our country by us releasing those, uh, th those resources and other nations doing that too. It is providing pressure on Russia as not being a provider any longer for places like Germany, for places like the uh, European continent in general. She's confused. I mean, the ruble has come back in part because Russia can sell its energy still. Correct. And, and China isn't exactly putting the clamps on Russia either. That's a very key partner for them over there. So this is where we're at at this point, Harris. You know, we, we have a media, though, that continues to defend this administration on the talking point in terms of uh, blaming Putin. New York Times did a fact check. So this is an opinion piece, an actual fact check. The headline, Republicans wrongly blame Biden for rising gas prices. Well, it's not just Republicans. It's the American people as well. And nobody's buying it at this point, Harris. Uh, another day, another 
another blunder for President Biden, so we'll get into this now. While commissioning a nuclear submarine over the weekend, the president referred to his wife, Jill, as Obama's vice president. I'm deeply proud of the work she's doing as first lady with joining forces initiative. She started with Michelle Obama when she was vice president and now carries on. As first lady. The White House quickly changed the official transcript to fix his error, but not before it blew up on social media. One user tweeted this. This is what happens when he tries to stretch a disastrous week into a Saturday. Another with how many passes can one president get? So the White House said he meant to say I instead of she, and that's what mm -hmm. they, they changed the official transcript. Yeah, pain is temporary, film is forever. It's an old saying from uh -huh. an old 80s movie way back when. So yeah, there it is on tape. So why change the transcript? But I don't poll know. after poll, right here, poll after poll is now showing that a majority of Americans think that this president does not have the mental sharpness to do the job. And once that impression is made, it's very hard to put that toothpaste back in the tube as far as is this guy who's going to be 80 years old in a couple of months, is he the right person for this job at this moment in his career? You know, early on uh, in his presidency, you would talk with people and, you know, citizens who take the polling, some who don't would say, give him a break. You know, everybody makes a mistake. Sure. He's known as a gaff machine. He is. Right? But now his gaffes are actually dangerous. Not this latest one. He can call whomever he wants. Sure. The wrong title. He calls Kamala Harris president. Right? Yeah. Um, but, but on the world stage, they've really hurt us. When he's a senator or a vice president, you could kind of laugh it off. Maybe it's just Joe Biden being Joe Biden, Brett Favre being Brett Favre, right? The old John Madden saying. Now he's commander in chief. So when he says that U.S. troops will be in Ukraine, when he says that we'll use chemical weapons against Russia if they use chemical weapons, mm. when he says that Vladimir Putin must be removed, these words have consequences, Harris. They do. Joe mm. Concha, thank you. My Monday date. Good to see you again. We're doing <laughs> this a lot these too. days. I like it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.